<laughs> Teddy Bridgewater, the new quarterback of the Carolina Panthers, who is taking the place of Cam Newton with a three-year, $63 million contract. Not bad for a guy who has started six games since January of 2016. He was introduced yesterday by the Carolina Panthers, and in this day and age of the COVID-19 situation, the coronavirus pandemic, you, there's no press conference. You, we get to see him on video. Here's some of what Teddy Bridgewater had to say. You know, it's a unique situation for me. All I have to do is continue to be myself. Uh, last year, you know, I don't want to speak on New Orleans. New Orleans too much, but when I was in New Orleans, I was behind the guy in the degrees. And, uh, you know, I knew that when Drew got injured, I had big shoes to fill in. And I just constantly reminded myself to just be you. you know, be the best version of Teddy that I could be. And um, by doing so, it allowed me to be, you know, a better teammate, a better football player, and a better person in the community. All right, that's Teddy Bridgewater being introduced as a Carolina Panthers starting quarterback. Do you think he's ready to be a full-time starter again? He has two years as a starter. His numbers were never great with the Vikings. He was in the shadow of Adrian Peterson for much of his time in Minnesota. He had the horrific knee injury in late August of 2016. He started six games since then. One was uh, garbage time, check the box, give Teddy a chance to play. But last year, 5-0, and oh, working with Sean Payton. That's a big investment, $21 million a year for a guy who hasn't played much football. Is he ready in your opinion, Peter? I think he is, Mike. Uh, and I think one of the things that Teddy Bridgewater has shown is that when you show just enough to get people excited about you and to get people to think that you're the real thing, when you show that, then somebody is going to get really excited. And it only takes one. And Mike, as I wrote in my column this week, you know, at the start of this free agent period, you know, in, in, by the middle of February, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had a list of three quarterbacks. And in order, the three quarterbacks who they wanted in free agency, one, Tom Brady, and deep down, they didn't think they were getting Tom Brady, two, Teddy Bridgewater, and three, Jameis Winston. So... This was a situation where I think I honestly thought, and I think the dance that that the that the Tam, that the um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers had to play with Teddy Bridgewater at the end, with Bridgewater and his agent, they had to play this dance because they really weren't positive. They thought they were getting Brady, but they weren't positive, and they basically had to let him go on Tuesday afternoon of free agency week. And so to me, when you see that level of interest, Bruce Arians, uh, you know, Joe Brady, who obviously had him in New Orleans. So what do you think Matt Rule is saying? Joe, Joe, tell us what to do. And so when, when Joe Brady says, I want Teddy Bridgewater, we're going to be a playoff team with Teddy Bridgewater. I would trust Joe Brady, especially after seeing that he was with the Saints, so he knew him. And he was with Joe Burrow last year at LSU. I, I think it's I think it's a no doubter, Mike. Yeah, look, I, I I agree with you completely. And I think what we saw from Teddy last year was what we were expecting to see from Teddy Bridgewater in 2016 before that knee injury. And it took a couple of years for the knee to get back to normal. It's amazing he's able to play after that injury, which was so it was just it was as bad as a knee injury can be. And it's an inspirational story. He never gave up. He never felt sorry for himself. He kept pushing and pushing. He's been a great teammate, a great presence in the locker room. He's had a chance to play and he's played well. And now he finally gets his financial reward, one that I never thought he'd get, Peter. Twenty one million a year. For a guy that was 5-0 and last year and, again, hasn't played a whole lot of football. And he had the Vikings in position to beat the Seahawks in that open-air playoff game. The last game played outdoors before the new stadium was open. But for Blair Walsh, Shank, and the field goal, he would have been the one who took down the Seahawks dynasty in that wild-card playoff game. So now he gets a chance with the Carolina Panthers to turn it around. And, you know, pretty good division of quarterbacks. Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Tom Brady, Teddy Bridgewater. You could do a lot worse in the NFL. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, and it's it's amazing when you think about some of the matchups we're going to see. I think one of the coolest things about this is, you know, you're going to see Tom Brady against Drew Brees twice this season, which is always, that was always a great, uh, you know, headliner type matchup. 
And so you're going to see that one twice. You're going to see Drew Brees against Teddy Bridgewater twice, which I think obviously is very cool. So I think a lot of the things, one of the things I'm going to do when the dust is settled, Mike, is I'm going to write basically a column that is going to be about with the new landscape, here's what we now see. And I don't just mean, you know, the New England Patriots without Tom Brady now being the number three team in their division, maybe. And again, I, I, I have no idea what I'll say or write at that time. But there's so many things because the landslide of moves and signings in the last two weeks uh, that have ch totally changed the landscape of the NFL that have really made it a, a much more interesting league in 2020, assuming there is going to be a 2020. You know, I, I need to hang my head in shame a little bit here. While I was touting the quarterbacks of the NFC South saying that there are four great ones, there are actually five. I forgot. How could I forget Taysom Hill? You got to throw. We got to include Hill. Taysom Hill. He's your guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's my guy. He's your guy, too. And he's going to be the backup, apparently, Sean guy. Payton says. The primary backup to Drew Brees this year. They're not going to go out and get another Teddy Bridgewater. They're just going to let it be Taysom Hill. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.